first item agenda, um, or first item on the agenda. Uh, it's Planning Board Item 2019-0190, Cumberland Avenue. We have a long form seeker. Uh, seeker review only of project involving constructive of a small boat marina at Wilcox Dock consisting of docking and anchorage for 28 boats of 26 foot in length or less. Uh, project includes paving of 3,100 square feet of the existing healthy long trail. Uh, the applicant is the city of Plasburg. The plan preparer is Andrew Dern uh, from the Department of Public Works. Once again, this is a seeker review only. I'll remind people we saw this last month. Uh, so we can open the floor to Andrew. Okay. Uh, so basically, we addressed the, the couple questions you guys had last month. Uh, the first one being the letter from Georgia Pacific. Uh, we sent you guys a letter addressing their list of concerns along with the email, uh, which basically outlined the meeting that we had with them and the uh, basically the agreement that we came up with them of the items that we would include in the project to uh, address their concerns. Uh, second issue, uh, you guys wanted the letter from SHPO. Uh, we had provided that uh, negative declaration from SHPO. Uh, the third was, uh, there was a couple questions about the uh, seeker. Uh, we did make uh, one change to, I think it was section B.2B. action cause a result in disturbance of bottom sediments. Uh, we change that from no to yes as an initial once the concrete acres were placed, they would displace some sediment. Um, but after the acres are placed, they will not cause any prolonged sediment displacement. And it looks like in your letter you also adjusted D1G. Yeah, so there was, a, there was a question about that. Um, so uh, that one was asking, does the proposed action include new non-residential construction? Uh, we left that no, because they're actually looking for some type of uh, structure uh, that would include some type of heating, or uh, a couple, if you go down, will the uh, building space be heated or cooled? So that's actually looking for an enclosed structure, not like a docking system or what we're looking to do here. So we left that. As no. Can I bring up on page two of 13, C2 adopted land use plans? Do any municipally adopted city comprehensive land use plans include the site? Well, I would say the city's master plan obviously includes the site because the city has a master plan. So I think that answer needs to be yes rather than no. Which one is it? It's the middle of page 2, C2 adopted land use plans. Okay. Do any municipally adopted comprehensive land use plans? Yes, we have a master plan. It includes the whole city. So if that lot is in the city, which it is, then it's included in that comprehensive, comprehensive land use plan. So the answer is yes, not no. Okay. It doesn't change any other answers. Right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> but it's answered incorrectly. Okay, yep. I agree. Andrew, did you have anything else you were looking to offer in here, or are you? Um, you know, at this point, if, if you guys have any questions regarding our response to uh, GP's uh, list of concerns, you know, I'm happy to answer any of those. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll open up to the to the board uh, for any comments, questions. So my question is about your response to. Planning words questions, questions two. So on the second page of your March 1st letter, um, which said, states, uh, the question is an increase, or, the, or the, uh, the planning word statement was an increase in boat traffic could stir up sediment from the lake bottom, which would become suspended in the water column and could migrate towards our raw water intake structure, or GP's raw water intake structure. Excessive sediment could cause our filters to plug, 
which would result in the flooding of our filtered plant. And then your statement is at the lake elevation of 94.36 feet, water depth at the docking system was plus or minus five feet, plus or minus 12 at the southerly. And with these water depths, we feel that prop wash should not be an issue. I guess I'm, one, I'm looking for your evidence that prop wash won't be an issue rather than your feeling. Um, an example from other jurisdictions that have protected water intakes in this kind of context. Okay. Um, you know, doing, a, doing a quick search about prop wash, what I could find was uh, jet boats. Um, the only thing that I've seen were jet boats have uh, different characteristics depending on motor size. I didn't find anything for a general outboard motor, which is typically what you're going to find on the boats that are going to be at this docking facility. Um, again, it's right now I don't have any scientific yeah. data. Um, I can continue to look to see if I can find anything. But uh, with, the, with the mirror that they have in place, any sediment should either drop before it gets to their weir or the weir should filter out any sediment that's going to go in their intake before they close. So I guess I'm looking for on that either an example of another location that's dealt with it and how they how they did that, or at least GP reading that statement and saying, you know, we agree, it's okay. A, it's okay. Okay. Because um, that statement was written, and they didn't, they haven't responded to that statement. No, they haven't responded. The <clears throat> email that I attached was basically their list of what yeah. they yeah. they had uh, okay. agreed to at the at the meeting. Yeah. It's also important to recognize that in a marina type setting like this, we get these boat slips like this. Um, entrance to the boat docking six system as well as exit from right. is always done gently okay yeah. nobody's flying in there and nobody's flying out everything is yeah. should be your reasonable boat or 99 out of 100 <laughs> is gentle you know there's not going to be a lot of propeller wash Occurring in that under right. that circumstance. Yeah, the whole the whole thing will have signs for no weight. No weight. Uh, yeah. The yes. other the other thing to think about too is without this marina, currently there's nothing stopping anybody from actually going and parking their boat right in front of right. their intake and throttling it right. to cause prop wash. Yeah. Um, at least with this, we're keeping a hundred foot separation mm -hmm. with a sign. You know, no boats beyond this point. So that's something that we can yeah. enforce. Uh, without this, there's nothing stopping anybody from yeah. from going right up to their so fine so at this point their intake actually has a, a weird protection yes. or yep. protection structure on it yeah if you uh, if you actually go to uh, go and look at it it's that's it's a concrete unit and then they have chain link fence that goes around it if you look down inside of it you can actually see the walls the different mm -hmm. walls that separate for the, uh, for the weir. and in addition your the <coughs> closest boat to the the dock structure itself is a hundred feet over hundred feet away. Over yeah, with water feet. depths of more than twelve feet deep. Okay. So any boat, any boat up on the surface shouldn't even be coming in contact with sediment no. to cause prop wash. And what kind of what kind of I guess continued um, efforts um, agreements do you have left with Georgia Pacific to? Um, move this forward after us um, so what happens is is they sent the letter to OGS so OGS will look for the same response that you guys asked for so I'll take this letter and send it to OGS uh, so this letter doesn't stop here if uh, if OGS isn't satisfied with my responses then I'll have to give them supplemental information so okay so as far as our review environmental review I guess it comes down to you know do we feel that this is a, maybe a possible issue, but not an issue that can be mitigated. And then obviously you have a permitting authority right. with the city, or that the city has to coordinate with, that has to and OGS is actually permit and approve it. Army Corps and DEC as well. So I have you know three or four other agencies that I'm dealing with. That have you received any correspondence from them? From, no, they didn't, DEC Nothing. or Army Corps, neither one of them had questions about prop wash. Or anything else? Um, DEC, I haven't actually gotten any comments back from them. Uh, they sent everything to OGS, so I'm assuming they were all good. Mm. Uh, Army Corps, I'm just waiting on them. They have to do their public uh, hearing. 
Mm -hmm. So they were sending out their 30 day notices. So I expect that to be over here within the next couple weeks. Mm -hmm. What kind of agreement do you have with the Canal Corporation? So we uh, currently we have a permit and it's a copy of it is in the original package we sent. Um, it's basically uh, a permit for use of the entire property and we maintain the property so we maintain the entrance. So when we start getting complaints of the entrances torn apart, we go mill it, roll it, um, we cut down any dead trees. Uh, that can become a hazard um, and then they're modifying our permit to install to basically pave the uh, healthy lung trail uh, they don't have jurisdiction over the docking system that's OGS because it's land under underwaters so they uh, they're only concerned with the paving and <coughs> they've already told OGS that they will be issuing this permit for that Does, is your agreement um, confined to the space or is it both sides of the dock so it is if you actually look at it um, dr. Dolan next door has a pie shaped permit yeah his um, his lake frontage is actually only about 50 feet his permit from OGS gives him about another 150 feet uh, so if you go out there or if you look at the plan there's a fence that goes down uh, that fence line is the border between our permit and Dr. Collins' permit. Uh, but from that fence, the rest of the will cost is ours. Okay. And then DEC has uh, the permit with Canal Corporation to uh, have the whole launch. Anybody else have any comments or questions? If not, I, I mean, I believe the application or information in front of us really is, you know, to determine do we have enough information to feel comfortable to make an environmental determination on the project. For the seeker. For seeker. For seeker. I have one more secret question on page 7 of 13, which is J, the proposed action results in a substantial increase in traffic above present levels. We're adding 30 some, 31, 30, 28, 28 yeah. places, which doesn't seem, I mean, substantial is vague. Does the box need to be checked yes, just to be accurate? It doesn't, I mean, I think it's a great project, I'm all for it, but should that box be checked yes? I don't know what percentage, in, I don't know if the traffic count has been done yeah. on, on covering the head there, or on. Right, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty busy place now. Uh, yeah. You can drive down there at any point in time of the day, and even right now, there, there are people that will go down there, park, eat, or lunch. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a pretty heavily trafficked area. Um, yeah, so it, it'll increase, you know, not everybody votes every single day. Yeah. Uh, so you're probably going to have, uh, it's going to be busier on weekends, obviously. And 28 seems a small increase compared to what's happening at Wilcox anyway. Yeah, especially. Right? And that's where the real day use Yeah, especially when you hurts. get tournaments, uh, you start getting vast tournaments and everything down there. Okay. I, I think, think I would argue that the parking spaces that you're identifying are already in existence. Yeah, and, and they are. Plus, uh -huh. it's right. not okay. an additional. Okay. Yeah, that was one of the, the questions that DEC had. Um, they had asked about uh, the parking, which okay. is why we included the parking plan, yeah. just to show that, hey, we're delineated parking away from the boat launch. Yeah. So anybody who uses the boat launch, their parking won't be affected by our marina. Yeah, yeah. And so there the space is there for parking yeah. anyway. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of space to park okay. there. Right. Yeah, then I wouldn't change. Then I think no is the correct answer. I would, I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. Now, <clears throat> anybody else have any other comments in regards to the secret form? If not, anybody else have any more comments in regards to the application as presented last month and, you know, supplemental information this month? <laughs> I'm wondering, 
since we have no minutes for me to familiarize myself with the what may have been discussed last month, I have a feeling I probably shouldn't vote on it. I, that's that, probably that makes sense. That's probably inappropriate. Yeah. So I won't be voting. Okay. 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 Um, well, obviously we have the you know the questions and responses from the city uh, from tonight. We have our responses from last month. If uh, there's no other comments in regards to the seeker, do we have a? Does anybody feel uh, we have enough information to make a motion on the determination for the seeker? And the. Questions about the boat wash and the Georgia Pacific intake are not seeker related, right? I mean, those are questions about Georgia Pacific's response to the question, et cetera. It's not a seeker question, right? I think I think the question is whether that rises to something that's uh, environmentally significant to right. where it can't be mitigated. You know what I mean? Right. It makes right. it fine that there's. Um, it would be in the client's best interest, City of Plattsburgh, to yeah. confirm this with. Right, and it, to it will be, definitely be, be in writing technology. with GP. Right, yeah. and actually, yeah. uh, one of the things I'm going to work on this week is actually getting in contact with GP. It's too minimal. To have this yeah. letter to say, hey, you know, we're not looking to, to mess up with GP or what. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and again, like we had discussed before, and you can see in that email, they agreed to us putting, you know, a sign up yeah. that says. You know, no votes beyond this point. Uh, so they they basically kind of already outlined, and we've agreed to what they were looking for yeah. to mitigate that issue. Yeah, communicate. There's a line of communication. Yeah, I don't see it. I guess as a seeker issue, which is what our that, motion would be about. I was gonna say, at most, I might see it as a as a small to moderate impact, but something that could be mitigated yeah. if the city didn't have a approval process that they had to go through outside of us I might say uh, we want to you know we want to see something more with this but city has a full approval with OGS to go through with yep. you know, other you other agencies I think it's something that's agree is the canoe and kayak launch still there yep will that pose any difficulty in no, the way uh, the boat flow. No, the eco the eco docks are on the opposite side. Um, if anything, currently what we see is people will launch their boats and then they'll drive around and they'll use the eco dock to yeah. load and unload. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So if anything, that causes more of an issue than yeah. what our marina yeah. our marina is going to cause because our marina is a little bit further away than what they're. I think it's worth are. mentioning that. That is a handicap accessible launch, and yep. you, you see that in very few communities. And I, you know, yeah, so that's you know the that was the main reason for paving the Healthy Long Trail was to make it uh, AD compliant yep. arena. We didn't have to do that because we have the eco docks, and those are ADA compliant. Um, so that's actually already a portion of that facility. Um, but we just felt like you know it makes it easier. For everybody, um, people in wheelchairs and crutches and, and everything else. So that was one of the elements we wanted to add to it. Will you be uh, improving any of the dock area next to the next to the uh, handicap? Um, you know, we probably could. The, you know, as we're you know, we have the paving machine out there. There's no reason why we couldn't you know pull a strip of asphalt in front of those docking systems i think it would be yeah. and and i know we actually our uh, marina maintainer actually built all new docks for the dec goal launch this winter so those docks that were the aluminum all busted up docks those will be replaced with new docks this year good so you know we're just trying to bring the whole facility up to you yeah. know a certain standard i uh i think i I had one other comment I know that came up at our pre-meeting in regards to uh, mitigation of uh, any um, overnight boat stays in terms of, you know, living in your boat or right. um, noise. Right. Is there... Um, so in our, uh, in our agreement, there is 
a section in there that says you have to adhere to city noise ordinance, which may have to change a little bit because I believe last week they actually amended the noise, or the noise ordinance. Right. Um, so what I'll do is I'll replace that section with the new section and the edited language in that. Um, as far as overnight stays, uh, I'm sure we could add something in there basically addressing that nobody in the marina itself could uh, stay overnight in their boat. Now that's not stopping anybody from the actual pier itself. I do know that there are a few house yes. boats that will come and tie up and stay there. Uh, we have no jurisdiction over that. Um, if somebody wants to tie their boat up, they, they can do it. Uh, that section, the Canal Corporation deals with. Um, and again, somebody could pull up and moor their boat in the water and mm -hmm. stay overnight. Uh, unfortunately, that bay lends itself, as long as there's not a surveillance southerly wind, uh, that bay prevails itself for a north wind for them to go in and moor uh, for protection. So there's, there's nothing we can really do about that, but we can, if they are docked at our docking system, then we can, uh, we can enforce that. I mean, it makes sense, especially if you're not allowing them to park overnight, that they also should not be able to right. yep. spend the night. Yep. Well, if there's no further comments, uh, and we feel the application is sufficient, do I have anybody willing to entertain a motion for the seeker review? I'll make a motion. A motion. With, yeah, with she, she had some corrections too, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. it should need to be considered. Just that. Thank yeah. You. Change of that answer. I'll correct for yes for a question. C2 adopted land use plans. Municipality has comprehensive land use plans. Yes is the answer for that. So. Okay. That's a, a motion of motion. no, no environmental motion. impact. Correct. No Correct. environmental impact. Where would I be without you? Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, any second? Second. Any further comment? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, we're going to do. Uh, I forgot that hand. Uh, got a hand. Hmm? You can. Jim Abdullah. Yes. John Canosa. Yes. Marissa Gilbert Zestain. Derek Rosenbaum? Yes. Rick Perry? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I almost called you the wrong name. Uh, Kurt Garbage? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. six members sitting here. Oh, that's moment. interesting. So. Yeah. Why do we have six members sitting? Because we have an alternate here. Officially, Kurt is our alternate. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. Yes. So, then so he's not really sitting. i sit on the bench. But because you have stand, I guess that's okay on the last one. There you go. Oh, oh not what I need. Well, then I should have just recused myself and gone out to it's the audience. Uh, so. But I'm let's, let's treat it that way, okay? Everybody yeah. agree? It's as if I was in the audience and I didn't. You were here in my place. <laughs> 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 Agreed. <laughs> we're not sending you to hell. You're a good lady. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's the right thing. Yeah, that's the right thing, but theoretically, I should have uh, yeah, gone down there. But I wasn't thinking about it as a no minutes thing. So, that was just secret review. You're right. Okay. And there would have been no guarantee we'd be able to. There's a pressure off. may have felt we didn't have enough information. Okay, moving on to. Planning Board Agenda Item Number Two. Uh, this is Planning Board Application Number 2019-0275 Beekman. Uh, it's a short form seeker. Site plan sketch review. The request to construct a 5,900 square foot addition to the existing hospital for a new musculoskeletal center. Yes. The project also includes 17,650 square feet of additional parking. And the applicant is CDPH. The plan is prepared is Thomas Colombo, uh, Stantec Consulting Services. Okay. 
Just yeah. if I could, just my name is Chris Booth, and I'm associate VP of Support Services at CDK. Just wanted to give a bit of background on this uh, for you folks that may or may not be covered in the application. Um, so this this project is a musculoskeletal and also a, a uh, cardiac interventional and non-interventional consolidation project. So this basically uh, conforms to a state and federal grant, which allows us to. Uh, uh, consolidate both our cardiac uh, practices on the on the campus and our orthopedic practices. So I don't know why we do musculoskeletal instead of orthopedics, but that's what it amounts it's to. It's more fun to say. It is. Yeah. 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 If, you, if you don't trip over yeah. your tongue, what you're doing. Uh, so the, the, the rationale for this basically is, is to build practice locations that are attractive both to our uh, our patients and also to our, our physicians so that we can retain and attract and retain the best talent uh, and provide the best care for our patients on CBPH campus. Uh, this aligned very closely with the, with the uh, goals of the grant. Uh, and we, we did receive a grant for $5.9 million to, to uh, accomplish this. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the work on this uh, uh, project is inside the buildings so the the project includes uh, renovation of the second floor of the 206 building which is the five-sided figure on the right of the uh, of the uh, shaded edition and it also uh, uh, renovates a substantial sections of our second floor on the MAB which is the uh, uh, sort of crooked building on the far left here, right there. Crooked building. Okay. Uh, the Cialis T Minor Medical Arts Building. Mm. Uh, that was built in 2006 and we're consolidating uh, all, of, uh, all of our cardiology practices on that second floor. Uh, so that gives you a bit of background. There's a rationale that, that supports healthcare in the community uh, and, and also the continuity of that healthcare uh, uh, with this project. Okay. So, and it also aligns with the Affordable Care Act and the, the initiative to get patient care, to begin to move patient care out in the community and away from inpatient hospital care. Okay? So, and I'll let Tom uh, carry on with the particulars. All right? Okay, thanks, folks. So, um, as, as, as Chris said, we're pretty much in the south portion of the campus. Cornelia Street runs along the bottom of the, the drawing there, deep in on the, on the, on the side there, right, right outside. Um, two, three areas, generally three areas of, of, of concern. Area A, where we've got the, the two-story addition that goes between the two buildings. Um, we have a, a area B, which is some additional handicap parking along that, that the drive, and then the two, I'm gonna call them two little expansion wings of area C, or the main south block. So um, with that, with the addition, this kind of gives you the, this is a grade plan kind of just pushed together basically uh, so you can see the whole thing at once. Uh, so the, the purple up on top is the, is the addition of the building. It has a new, a new uh, sidewalk entrance that comes up into the, into the, the vestibule. Uh, Within that vestibule will be some great change that needs to happen. So there'll be interior wrapping to, to make that work. Um, we have a water main that kind of runs through that area that we need to relocate around the 206 building. Um, you see it in the dark, the dark uh, W line there. It kind of wraps around and ties back into where the water main is in that, in that corner there that of the, uh, the interchange. So, um, it's kind of how we handle the utilities associated with the building. Uh, everything else is connected internally. Um, so the big, the big part of this parking lot uh, addition is to really get some spaces where we can, reorient the, the parking so it's a little more pedestrian friendly, mm -hmm. and really try to make this the ADA parking compliant. Because there's a lot of spaces that are Marked for, let's say, marked for handicapped that just need, they're just trying to reserve spaces for folks that are as close as possible to the door. So, it, within the loop is all, is all handicapped accessible. We've added another seven uh, along the drive and then 
we've, we've, put, put, we've put the whole group up along uh, the north end of the south lot. So that gives us an additional 10, spa 10 spaces for a total of 22. That, that does not include the drop off lot. Um, so the total, uh, so the other part is that currently the spaces run kind of, I'm going to say, south, uh, southwest to northeast. They run in a, you know, in a diagonal direction. When we turn them, we now have the aisles that kind of like, as you walk up the aisle, you walk up towards the building. So you're not having to cut through the cars. That uh, does kind of straighten out our, our ends there, our south ends. You can just scroll up a little bit. No, the other right side. Okay. So that, you'll see we've got a, <coughs> that uh, dash line that runs through the parking lot, and then you've got the, the contours that kind of attached to it there. That's the, the limit of the, the new parking. So this area here is, is the pavement <coughs> along here. This area here is the pavement. Everything drains from west to east, from <coughs> west to east. Uh, and we have a storm sewer that runs right along this, this line up and through here. So we're really fortunate that we can keep that, that, that grading consistent and we can add some inlets where we need to uh, to pick up. So we're not like rebuilding the whole, the whole parking lot. It really doesn't need it. Um, the entire area is curved. So that allows us to really contain the water in the parking lot so that we don't end up uh, having any issues with our neighbors to the east. Um, we have currently a sidewalk that runs di diagonally <coughs> into, into the road on Cornelia Street uh, where the fence is. We're going to move that sidewalk, re replace it with one coming down here by the main entrance. Uh, we would close off that fence. We'd add some planning to kind of continue that that buffer along along the road here. So this, you know, that, that can get strengthened. We're looking at adding some more plantings along this side as well. So we can kind of make that nice that nice entry point. We have um, so with the relocation of the parking the parking lot, the orientation of the parking, we can put new lighting in. The plan, uh, on the plans, they're, uh, they're all proposed to be the new LED lights. They're, the uh, they're the full cutoff lights, 4,000 K color. Um, so we are disturbing less than an acre, so we don't need to get coverage of their speedies. Uh, but we do have, you know, we do have road control in the in the handle road control and some of the we uh, also, as part of the application, we we'll some rent, uh, architectural renderings. And if you want, you can just kind of take a look at, look at those real quick so you can see what the building's going to look like. It'll be the one all the way in the bottom. So, that, that's, so the medical office building 206 is the existing building. The new building is a piece in the center mm -hmm. with the light. So <coughs> You can see the the difference in we have a, a stairway on the on the 206 building, so uh, the drop off, the, the ADA drop off on the on to the to the left there will then allow connection through there. Tom, is this essentially making those two buildings into one, or? How is that going to operate? There's the actually a there's actually a, a break and it's all glass right okay. along the left hand side and it allows the light bulb to come down so that so that I'm sure we get we get light in against the building. So the buildings are separate. They are separate. Yeah. They're, they're separate. So it'll become it'll be three buildings essentially. Two. It, yeah, it, 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 it attaches to the two. Oh, attaches to the two of six and yep. the other one stays. In okay. addition to the two of six. Buildings. Gotcha. Correct. Okay. Um, 
No, I think I, I think the uh, the handicapped accessibility uh, features that the building will have are quite a bit superior to what we have on the site right now, and mm -hmm. that was part of our rationale for setting it up the way it is. Um, both, you know, a, a good pick up and drop off point under a canopy, and then uh, and then a spacious uh, vestibule inside the building. So once folks get off the street, they're not, you know, queued up outside in the line or some other or some other, uh, you know, less than favorable uh, entry point into the building. And uh, I think the other part is it, it de-emphasizes the, the, uh, the, the stairway that is off the front of the building to uh, accomplish access. So um, we feel we have a big benefit to, and many of the patients have either physical handicaps or, or some mobility challenges, shall we say, that, that, that need to be addressed. And anything we can do to make that easier is, is uh, part of our goal here. So, so with our initial application, we submitted a short form EAF. Um, I mean, for your consideration and for, for us to discuss this stuff, how we to move forward on this. <coughs> I was going to say, uh, I guess, procedurally, a couple of items that came up at our pre-meeting, uh, Seeker was one of them, whether or not the hospital has prior action under a long form, which would require a long form Seeker, or there's any thresholds that, once again, you've already exceeded and you're expanding within a long form Seeker. Some of that, truly, uh, we don't have an attorney at our table at the moment. We would have to bring back to mm -hmm. uh, our council. For the city to see what their read is. See the what their read is. I mean, I would ask maybe that you take a look at it as an applicant to cut, you know, dot our eyes and cross our t's. That we're yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at this point, we were doing the application of the let's do the short form, start it, right. we'll kind of see how it see how it goes. No, under, understood. I think uh, you know that that's sort of a, once again an open question. We're going to be asking our. Yeah. Council, and then, yeah. you know, maybe you take a look at his applicant as well. Uh, second item, uh, technically underneath the zoning regulations, this requires. Now you you had a variance. We got we got the variance for the we had a, yeah the very variance uh, we appeared in front of the zoning board last Monday night, mm -hmm. and because the green space changed a little bit, it was like right. a percentage point or very small, and uh, we did receive our use variance, our area variance last week for the zoning board. Um, we don't have anything ready yet. But yeah, we have not made a decision yet from that. We got the approval. Yeah. Um, just to note, also the county planning board approved the project. We went from them uh, okay. last month, so and they had no comments whatsoever. Okay. Okay. Did we, did we receive a copy of that as well? I have not received a copy from the county. Um, for that's for the zoning action. I did refer this for the planning action last. It's going to be this upcoming months. Um, oh, for that. For April. April. So they, it goes back for our application in April? Yes. Okay. So the planning application will be in front of the county and okay. at the April meeting. Okay. Um, technically, underneath our zoning ordinance, um, although there was discussion in the pre-meeting on some possible opinions of the zoning board from prior, uh, technically it requires a special use permit, this application. Um, so not having a, a determination uh, from the building department or anything in writing, I think that's probably something to confirm. Uh, if there's an active special use permit? If there's active, if it needs yeah. to be updated, if it's yeah, just you know there's some discussion about some prior decision of the zoning board uh, waiving the necessity for that, but we can, I can sort of talk to Mr. McMahon about that. To, to confirm that. Sure. Um, I believe that, that generally discusses some of the, you know, once again, more procedural and other permit uh, items. I guess as far as um, the application review, does this, does this campus have an overall stormwater pollution prevention plan? An active? I'm sorry, what's that? I, I don't believe it actually has a, a swept right now. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I don't believe it has a swept right now. If that's something where you just get confirmation in writing being yeah. yeah. um, and if, if there is one I, then I would think you know this project would be an update or modify it um, 
parking calculations. Um, although, you know, it prescribes what the parking existing and parking proposed, mm -hmm. um, can you update the, the actual calculations of the parking in accordance with so the zoning? The campus? I, I don't so, know. Yeah, I mean, we, to get the other side. I mean, I'll be quite honest. We, we just looked at that south so. lot and did a, you know, we counted up existing, we counted up proposal, we just yeah. had a look at that south mm -hmm. lot section. We didn't, we didn't go and do a full count. I think, I think ultimately, you know, once again, being the city planning board, we should probably have something that let's, let's tells us how it's applicable to our zoning, to our ordinance. Um, I think ultimately, uh, same thing as that equates to handicap parking. I think you, you're exceeding it here. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't yeah, know. No, we, yeah, we can, we can we'll provide a full inventory. Of okay. Okay. Employee parking, visitor parking, handicap, you know, by, by designation, whatever, yeah, whatever you need. That'd be perfect. It just, and then it just goes back to our zoning ordinance. Yeah. Um, utility impacts, I think you indicated about the water line uh, going up, yeah, up and around. around. Yeah. Yep. Is there, uh, I guess just coordinating with the uh, planning department that there's there's no impact to city utilities. I think we did have some comment in our pre meeting. Yeah, uh, but any work they're doing is privately owned, so we okay. we have no basically we have no jurisdiction over it. It's it's anything that you guys are required to see as far as details. Okay. We are remo mo re we're removing a few trees in that area at the behest of the of the uh, municipal lighting department. Um, mm. They felt they were a hazard to some of the transmission lines that travel uh, uh, east west on Granny Street. So, okay. So there's some. I mean, if you look at that hedgerow, there's some um, some trees that are, that are pretty well beat up, uh, and they've been marked for yeah. removal. And you know, some of the ideas we would probably put some more planning in there to try to help keep that buffer in place. Yeah. We would. We would. You know, should the, assuming this is acceptable, we we would be replacing. All of the landscape planning on the on the Cornelia Street CDPH border, basically, uh, in the area of the parking lot and up to our current uh, Cornelia Street entrance. So that's all going to get redone. Okay, I would think for 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 next month, just you know, ensure that with the planning department, we're coordinating to get city department comments. Sure. Uh, from, you know, I, I had you know, obviously, you're already dealing with electric department. <laughs> Public works, I think, is a, a little bit simpler. Yeah. Um, maybe make sure we get uh, at least the fire department has been notified and police department notified, and then if they have any comments. Absolutely, and, and they're, they're part of our they're part of our yeah. regular communication. You know, when, whenever we do a project, the the uh, fire department uh, every platoon comes through, okay. checks out the checks out the. Uh, Territory as it were. Mm -hmm. so we've got a good coordinated plan. Should we have to respond? Okay. Uh, the only comments we got back on this from other departments was Joe. He had none. Okay. Okay. Um, I think you you had elaborated about the fence change mm -hmm. along Cornelia and then the sidewalk change. Right. How do I don't know if it's the hospital's responsibility, but how do you address uh, you know, staff break area yeah. out along Cornelia? Um, very delicately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I think, it's, uh, it's, pick up the bench a, a bit. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we we provide a, a spot. We try not to embellish it at all because we obviously we're, we have to allow smoking somewhere in the vicinity. Um, so we have defaulted it onto city property, which is probably not. I think it's going to be illegal. Very, point, very, very soon. I don't know what else to do with it. You know, smoke. We, we are on our, 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 our policy is setting it up city on, 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 on yeah, our property. But we have a policy to do on public right yeah. where no, yeah. we are no smoking cannabis. Yeah. So I guess. I, I guess. I guess I'll leave that delicately up to maybe we should be talking with. Our city, city council somehow. City council. I mean, I don't. I guess ultimately, we, I know there's a location with a bench yep. that we're now removing, 
and we're moving it over to your main entrance. Closer, closer to the main entrance. But if you're on city, again, new city law, if they're on city property, city sidewalk, they're not going to be allowed to smoke. So I'm kind of thinking there's no more smoking period unless you put it on your campus. Like on a very edge of your campus. I don't smoke. Kind of where we have it right now. Uh, but, yeah, on the edge. But onto the city side. So we so we we made they, yeah, just recently so yeah the toe our toes are not on the property line uh, okay uh, which may be the best way to do this because we know we're not I mean just experience tells us we're not going to be able to get, get rid of this by saying so you know it's you know, you've got to have a practical solution so we if you go if you go back to that the the site by the CG one well asked there. I think that I think the best bet probably is to have some uh, have some coordination with the city and the affected departments uh, maybe between now and the next meeting yeah. so we have some yeah. type of I mean we have regulations in the city right away you have regulations in the hospital yeah. but yet we know we have to address it somehow so maybe it's yeah. best to yeah. coordinate you know I think it, it pretty clearly if there's a pinch it's going to have to be on, on CBPH property uh, so if, it, if there's an area uh, we may we may opt to do something somewhere else on CBPH property so it's Our not end. so yeah. we don't have that issue uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll do some discussion on that with uh, with Joe and also with uh, with our team and see what we can come up with okay for a solution I don't really like the idea of having it be on the main concourse into the yeah, yeah. into the no. site yeah. anyway and so we, we may we may have to rethink that a little bit okay so we will come back with something that, that that addresses that for next meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, and I believe that generally was the list yeah. I had yeah. to, from the pre meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Were there any other comments, questions? I have a comment up here. Okay. Um, starting in 1988, I had the privilege of working with the fine uh, development team at CVPH, their engineers, architects, staff. And I gotta tell you, I, I personally signed off on all development on that site from 88 to 2012. And truly CVPH staff was a pleasure uh, to have dealt with. In 2017, I happened to be a cardiac care patient. And I gotta tell you, the people that run those departments are second to none. Uh, from the doctors to the, to the staff in cardiac rehab. And I just wanted to give my personal thanks and praise to the, everybody involved. Well, on behalf of CBPH, we we, uh, we appreciate the sentiment and, and darn glad we have got the facility set up so that, that we can take care of that. Right now. Thank you. Okay. Any other? Uh, Am I able to ask a question here? <laughs> I think you are. You can. You're public. You can ask. Yeah, you can yeah, you did not. You can you can stay there. I would I would I would echo I would echo Rick's statements for for sure. Um, and you know, Chris, we work together on numerous projects, and that's been fantastic. Um, I have just a couple of questions or suggestions. I walk from the college to Fitzpatrick every couple weeks for a treatment. And on, you know, where the main entrance then takes that Y, mm -hmm. there, that becomes pretty, some pretty fast moving traffic. I don't think people really um, 
feel like they're in a parking lot on the north. Yeah. Yeah, where yeah. they make that the Y of that right. And I have a hard time then walking across. I walk down the sidewalk and I take a left and then follow the sidewalk like the Patrick. I'm curious if you want to either paint a line or do a speed bump there. Something to calm traffic going mm -hmm. up real straight away, especially now that you'll have cars packing out from yeah. those handicapped places. We talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Could just be painted lines, could be raised, you know, yeah. whatever. Would be nice there for pedestrians. The second comment was I'm curious about the funding you have for the project and where that comes from, and if your funder would be interested in. Um, couple of electric vehicle charging stations, which an institution like the hospital can often get, be funded through grants. And I, you know your funding yes, list, and you, can, you know, that might be worth looking at. It's something I push on lots of projects. Yes, sir. Well, this, this grant is basically, a, is, is spent out. It, it, it's not spent out, but it's, it's been granted. So uh, there is another grant that we're working on that, uh, for the uh, installation of some charging stations. We okay. may be able to uh, introduce that in, in the electrical infrastructure for this parking lot. I don't have it, it's not specifically in the scope yet, but we're still working out bits and pieces of the scope, and some of it will depend on what is acceptable to the board here, too. So, yeah. um, so I think certainly a great comment, Kurt, and, and something it, it would give us the opportunity to, to set something like that up. Here, you know, two spaces that are charging stations. Um, we've been asked by a couple of our physicians and uh, a couple of uh, interested parties, that, you know, in the public to do that. We haven't really come up with the right position for it. This may be actually a good spot though, because it, people won't fight over the spaces as much as if, as if we put them closer to the main entrance of the yeah. hospital, for instance. So, uh, so good point. Last two are quick. I think you're losing lots of parking places to college students because your parking. I was going to say that this ex have. excludes parking the, the college parking. So the signs or something because I know I have students that park at the hospital in the park across the street. No, and um, this, and this, you know, this will help alleviate this. The parking plan we have now will help alleviate. Okay. It, it will help the traffic flow and it will help alleviate some pressure that we have on that side of the campus. Yeah. Um, okay. And. And, and, and in the context of expanding our practices and, and the patient load uh, out there. And that's why we're really asking for the consideration because we anticipate higher volume, some, somewhat higher volume. Um, we're also going to be unplugging some services that exist out there right now that utilize parking and moving them into off-site locations where, where possible. Um, but we do anticipate and what we want to do is clear the way for Patients, that's our top priority, uh, and that's and that's why we've suggested the changes and expanded the scope of this to beyond just a building addition, but the parking lot. And to, for for me, the parking lot's the most important part of this whole thing. You know, it's it, because if you don't have access to services, if people are unable to find parking nearby, the service becomes untenable. And then I think I have students. The, the question about where to move the smokers, I think I would be an interesting problem for students to work on as long as it doesn't hold up your application. No, but so if you want to work on that, I have students that would be interested in helping. Cool. Let's, let's talk. Okay. Let's talk. Cool. Okay. I said piggyback on something Kurt said about the handicapped parking spaces that are right there taking up the green space. Yeah. What did you mention, or what did you say you guys had looked into there? Some type of speed bump? Is that what you is that what you talked about? <coughs> well, we were, we were. I was suggesting that we push the handicap right before the meeting to Tom that we push the handicap parking a couple of feet farther toward the building so that so that no parking, out. which requires a back out, uh, doesn't encumber both lanes of the of of the. Uh, uh, access route. Yeah. So just and you, these things occur to me at the oddest times. It's not the right time to be talking about a change in plan. But, uh, you know, you start of thinking those things through and looking at it, and uh, an, an idea comes up. So, uh, so we're going to take a look at that, and we'll, you know, I'm not, I'm not suggesting we're going to change this plan uh, midstream while we're trying to get it accepted by the 
but I think the planning department for the city of Plattsburgh, but we will take a look at that and see if it's a feasible idea. Okay. Yeah, and, I mean, this, but I think the speed bump um, idea along the lines of what has been put in at Brewer Street, where they're substantial and they're they're also you're able to plow snow over them, um, mm -hmm. would be a would be a viable idea. Mm -hmm. And we could use it frankly because there's there's traffic that moves way too fast on that campus as there is in many places. So we can do a speed table and a cross one. So one yeah. one time. Yeah. So we will, we will, uh, yeah, that's just, I was only thinking about you already. Yeah. <coughs> I'd, be, I'd be cautious how how much closer you put those parking spaces because it does put you in a collapse zone. So, fire department access in case of emergency. Yeah. We've got seismic break, seismic break in all those buildings. So, so on, on that building, yeah, at, at any rate. So. Yep. Not that that will make a difference. In the it, well, I mean, we're only going to put all the shut down a few feet. And, you know, we've got a three-story three building adjacent to it. Yeah. I worry and about one that of our smoke stack too, right? So. Yeah, one of our considerations in previous expansion. That's why you have the mountable curbing on the north side of the complex, so that they could maintain up. access around. Well, it'll probably be interesting to see what the fire department's comments are. Yeah. Okay. Any further comment? Okay. If not, I don't. I don't think we have an action tonight. You have uh, our comments for next Perfect. next month. Would there be offered if, if we um, have them addressed? Is there any? Would there be any point in? getting them in front of either yourself, Jim, or, or other members of the board in advance just to tell us if we're on the right track. Pro probably start right off with, right off of planning staff. Uh, yeah, if you send them to me, um, okay. then um, I can just go ahead and do them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll be on the agenda for next month. Um, I think, yeah, but we should, Make sure we get get our response letter to you, which will be summarizing things. Yep, and then coordinate with the planning department to get on for next month's agenda. Okay. You'll you'll have our response letter within a week uh, by the end of this week at least, and then you have I think, until next Friday uh, to get us any information for the next agenda. But so far, it doesn't look like we have any Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to planning board agenda item number three. Uh, this is planning board application number 2019-03. Uh, this is for 90 to 92 Miller Street. Uh, we have a short form seeker. We have a site plan sketch review, request to construct an additional two single family townhouse style units to an existing under construction fourplex. Uh, the applicant is Musso Development. Uh, the plan preparer is Scott Allen. And Scott is here. Mm -hmm. oh, folks, I apologize. For some reason, I had in my mind that you started at 7.30, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, few points about this project. Uh, there's already under construction the floor flex unit on the north side of the site. Um, and therefore, uh, there's already utilities connected to the site. Water, sewer, and electric is all serving the existing um, floor flex. Uh, <clears throat> the developer wishes to add two more units on the east side, units five and six. Um, the parking lot will um, gain access to the existing curbs, curb cut on Miller Street. Right there is the driveway, uh, existing driveway for one of the houses that uh, was on this site previously. Um, the, if you notice, we bring the parking lot right up to the south line of the parcel. Um, I think your uh, ordinance calls for a three foot separation. Uh, but what we would like to do instead of that is 
acquire a 10 foot wide easement from the property from the south, which is controlled or owned by the same developer. Um, and within that strip, we can utilize it for uh, snow, uh, push the snow into that strip off the parking lot. And we also place um, uh, some stormwater uh, best management practices uh, within that strip. Um, some green infrastructure and so forth. Along that 10 foot wide area along the south as well as uh, the back of the building on the east side and the northeast side uh, of the lot. Uh, we can run the uh, roof gutters um, into some uh, best manager practices for stormwater. Uh, the site is right at the um, maximum allowable open space. Uh, the building space, I believe, is just under, uh, but uh, all aspects of the site, in the zoning and bolt. Um, that's with meet the, the uh, pardon me. Sorry, that's with the two more units, or yes. currently? Yes. Yeah. No. No variance is required. We're, okay. we're we're able to meet all of the zoning requirements on the site. You mean except for the paving right up to the lot line? Um. Yeah. That's well, that, would, that would need a variance, right? Well, I'm not sure it would need a variance. I think they, I think with, I think the planning board has the power to. to I'm thinking to not. Okay. Uh, well, again, it's something you yeah. need to clarify with Joe. Okay. We can do that. Sure. Yeah. 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 I think we've done it before without. I think that. You know, when, when we look at the things that are um, in the body of the zoning ordinance, um, I think in, in general. The way we've dealt with those is that the planning board has the purview to, to review those. If it's not in Schedule A or Schedule B of the zoning ordinance, then I think uh, the planning board has some power with regard to, uh, to those dimensional requirements inside the ordinance. We're just going to get it clarified. Sure. Yep. Okay. That's fine. So that's basically the project in a nutshell. Where you would like uh, your comments, and we'll come back to you. So in the next, in the next week, right? I see. Next is it next Friday? Next Friday. Correct. One week. One week. Uh, typical deadline is this week, but for something that's being reviewed, it's up to next Friday. Okay. The following next, Friday. Next not Friday. This, yes. Not this Friday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everything, uh, Incorporated into uh, the next go around and incorporate any comments that we have as well. So, you have an initial comment in regards to paving to the property line. Yes. That's something probably to coordinate with planning staff and, and Joe. Okay. So, we have something, we'll yeah. something in line uh, or in writing. Um, what about uh, a parking that, lot maneuvering area? Behind the parking spaces, I see a 20 foot. Yeah, doesn't it need to be 26? Or do we have the right to deviate from that? Well, I, I think you do too. I think when you're talking about, um, you know, a more major parking lot, I think, you know, 26 feet is probably the general rule in the zoning ordinance. But I think in this case, what we have primarily, you know, one way, more or less, traffic going in and out of there. I think 20 feet is adequate. We've got the 9 by 18 parking spaces. 20 feet is plenty of maneuvering area. Scott, I'm just, I'm, I'm laughing at you because you, I think you're just telling us we have all sorts of powers that I don't believe we have. I know, I know that in a large parking lot we can say that a certain number of spaces are like mini car spaces, et cetera, that we have certain powers that are delineated in the code, but I think you are talking out of your hat on this we'll see okay so because uh, i really want to get this absolutely from joe or perhaps even from the Switching attorney that, yeah. um that you're saying we have these powers because <coughs> i'm after all the years i've spent on the zoning board we definitely did not cede a lot of this um area variance stuff to the planning board uh, we didn't do it if you didn't have the right size do you recall uh, we i'm just saying we as a board as a zoning yeah. board were the ones you giving you those the, variances uh, that we lots? could be giving you variances but that would be the zoning board not the planning board yeah my question was when you were on the zoning board do you recall giving a variance for a parking aisle with 
I probably we did, but it was the power of the zoning board to do it, not the power of the planning board. So I'm just okay. suggesting that who, Scott, if you if you can coordinate with planning staff, and then we'll get a determination. Certainly, will. if not from Joe, we'll get it from city council and make sure we're consistent. I think that's the key. Consistent. Um, right. With it, with that said, I have a question. This project, this is the first time it's in front of us, correct? Yes. Was there a determination made somehow that you went to some threshold that it all of a sudden is coming to us? Number of parking spaces. Okay. Is it because the... Okay. So the, the building... Over 10. Over 10. Over 10 right. parking spaces. That triggered site plan review. Okay. Mm. Did, did you have what you and you had less parking spaces before? We had uh, eight parking spaces for the four plugs. Um, for the four what plugs did a what's a uh, Okay, so a okay. That, I guess I'm I, I'm interpreting that the site pretty much was district. as is with the four, and you're just adding district, but it's a five and six. And a you're district. actually expanding the site footprint beyond just adding two townhouses. Right, we're expanding the parking lot as well. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, with it, with that said, did you did you? Uh, I didn't see on the plan where you actually, uh, I guess, solidified the parking calculation. How you 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 referred to obviously the note yeah. the, in terms of it's you know one per dwelling plus one per additional adult yeah. above. Yeah, that's what's in the order. Yeah. Do you want to? I think if you can add in there the actual calculation of what you assumed notes. to yeah. get to 11. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, yeah, sure. That's, that's you know based what I on mean? six units. It's based on past history of the rent of the units in terms of how many employees or how many uh, uh, adult members over two are in there. Okay. So once again, if you can just calculate it out, just so you well, it's not a calculation. It's based. It's based on past experience with that style of unit in the city. Okay, but so you're not actually following the zoning code for the number of bedrooms yeah, and the. It's, that's what, that's what he's no, asking. There's, there's no way of telling how many adult members will be in well, here. Well, how many two. bedrooms? How many bedrooms are in these? There's units? two bedrooms. These are all two bedrooms. Yes, they are. Okay, yeah. so we have twelve bedrooms. Right. Okay, and. So when you use the 12 bedrooms and you multiply it out, what do you get? You get 24, is that right? Six, or six times two bedrooms right. is 12. Yeah. yeah, sure, sure. And yes, that's a straight math of it, but that's not what the zoning requires. Okay, well, again. It's not based on number of bedrooms. Just so give what us we can do is provide you with history of other usages, usages like this in the city, okay. and that's all that we can give you. That's well, probably the best bet then, is that uh, that is somehow summarized on this plan. We need, we need how more. How you calculate it and came and, up with your space. And, and um, has been mentioned, what about screening of the parking area? As it, I presume this next door neighbor is a, is a residential lot too. Yes. So you've got a residential abutting a residential. How are you screening the parking area? There's, there's not anticipated to be any screening in this case. And no. so we're not complying with the code that requires a screening when you have a certain number of parking spaces in the city? Uh, no, we're not. Okay, no. so wouldn't that be a variance? I don't believe it is. I think this is all within the power of second and review. Uh, I'm just, Scott, yeah, I've I never seen you go <laughs> down this path before. I'm really kind of stunned of not saying any variances are needed. This is another thing, please, to put in the letter to get clarified, but I'm pretty sure we don't have that power either. I think in the end, there is a balancing point between the power of the planning board and the power of the zoning board in terms of zoning ordinance items. Um, I do think clearly we'll probably need some clarification on a couple of these items. Um, to sure. we'll ask, we'll ask. Yeah, I, I can say screening was one was one of my questions. Uh, now I understand you own the adjacent property. Um, For now, uh, yeah. but. I, with that said, you know that at least two of your prior applications that have come forward, you know, this board has, has looked for screening at the parking. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I would think that we would be considering this in a similar case. Do you do you own the property now? That 
this is this is like a vacant land in between, and then you have a larger asphalt parking lot, and then you have the old um, laundromat that was converted to apartments. That's correct. Are those owned by the, uh, this? The, the area to the south of, the, of, the, of this lot is owned by Musil uh, Development, Musil Properties. Is that Kathy Dame's old apartments? Pardon me? Is that yeah, the apartments owned by Kathy Dame? That Kenny Bond? Um, that's further south. That's oh. not shown in this plan. Oh, we're in different There's a two-story apartment plan in the rear of that lawn area. See, from that two-story apartment out of the street is long. Yeah. I mean, I, th I, I think ultimately, Scott, uh, under normal circumstances, we would be looking for screening at yeah. the parking. So if you can consider that, take a look at it. Looking okay. to change something that otherwise, you know, confirming the planning board has authority or it needs a zoning variance, you know, making sure we have that yeah. confirmed. And again, it's one of those things where if the if there's some question of whether the planning board has the authority or not, it's actually the zoning board that makes the determination, <laughs> not us. Well, let's let's see let's yeah, see if we have. Just a screen there. Once again, let's see if we have past precedent. It is. Supports or refutes the applicant's application. Um, uh, city department comments. I don't know where there are any city department yeah. comments. The only person who got back to me was Joe for all of them, and he had no comments on any. Okay. Okay. I seen <laughs> you haven't seen this yet? No. I can give you a copy of Okay. Questions. And per perhaps that's because it's a sketch plan? Probably. Perhaps. Um, but we'll be looking to make sure that all, you know, we have city department yeah. comments. Sure. Yeah, we'd love to get those before we come back to the planning board so we don't end up with a third month. Yeah, I, possible. If you can coordinate with planning staff, we'll. Sure try to move that forward with you. Um, floor plan, floor plans and elevations. I don't know, Scott, in my packet, I didn't have anything for that, but is that something you have? We'll certainly submit it. Okay. Uh, this uh, easement, or proposed easement, do you have, is this something that's in place today or is this something to be created? We'd have to create it. Okay. If that's something you can, you know, uh, show proof of, if that's what you're proposing, show proof of uh, filing or creation. Okay. In order to support the site plan, obviously. Uh, dumpster refuse area. Is that um, going to be individual cans? Yes. Or bins? Yeah. Okay. And I'm assuming that that is like a fence screening around that? Uh, yes, around the um, south and east sides. Okay. And then. It's not a four sided uh, enclosure? Uh, no. We can we can actually put fence on the north side of it. We think that's great right area, yeah. but uh, we'd like to leave the you know access on the uh, on the west side of it open to um, the tenants as well as um, open towards the side of Miller Street. You see. Right, yeah. yeah, that way the tenants can reach it. And, yeah, and um, the garbage um, disposal people can reach it. This may be more of a question for Joe, but do you have any do you have any concern with the shared handicap access aisle shared with your dumpster location or your mm -hmm. no, garbage we're, location? We're look at that. We we didn't find anything code wise that would I'd, prohibit that. Okay. But it will be striped. Something just to look at once once again. Uh, I can't say that I've ever seen anything. Code wise per se, but I, I I haven't seen that necessarily proposed. Either. Maybe if you can confirm with Joe yeah, uh, McMahon. Um, 
and, I, and you, you had uh, some sim similar uh, privacy fencing detail, I believe that we've seen in other, in your uh, the couple prior site plan reviews. Yeah. I'm assuming that details for around that. Around, around the, uh, uh, the refuse area. That's the, okay, that's what you were using that for. Board have any other comments, questions? I would say uh, once again, Scott, if you can coordinate with planning staff, especially with especially with some of these open dimensional items sure. that seem to raise a little bit of question at the plan at the, the board level here. Project this KLM or next one? Excellent. Excellent. Okay. That's what Kai is looking for. Take it easy, Take it easy. <laughs> and it's, Scott, same same thing. If you can confirm, I mean, we're we're confirming dimensions of paving to the property line, width of the of the actual uh, aisle into the parking. Is it spread. 20 foot? Is, yeah. is there anything in driveway width? A, a nine foot driveway? Well, what we're trying to do is match up the, the existing curb cut out there. Sure. And then we've got you know plenty of room. We think when you come in that first 20 feet, you know, there's plenty of room as you can see there to think one car to wait while another car goes by, which is something certainly that's not unprecedented. You can see it, it's yeah. City driveway. I, th I think in the, if, if I recall correctly, in uh, the application for the multifamily housing, which we're looking at the subdivision for next application, we, uh, this board had addressed something with driveway width. I don't recall how we did that, to be honest with you, but it maybe it would be good to look back and see that might yeah, be used. Yeah, we had a much further. longer throat in that situation. I think it was. You well, know, prove them to the line in there. Yeah. I'll tell you another, I really, I, you know, I, I really don't want to create a main thoroughfare at that intersection here that because of our proximity yep. to the railroad crossing, too. So, what do you mean? So, two, you two mind, cars in and out, you mean? Yeah, you yeah I understand mind, that. I, I like Nine feet it. seems kind of slim, though, you know? Yeah. And it's adhering to the existing curb cut, that's nickels and dimes, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. more is better if, pos if it's applicable. I think uh, to, to twofold, you know, maybe maybe look at that or what we've done in the past, and then obviously that gives you as the applicant a little bit of procedural uh, discussion <laughs> on other applications you've brought in front of us. have any other comments for the applicant so that in an effort when they come back they've heard from all of us okay Scott thank okay. you okay thank you very much folks thank you thanks Todd, you want to give it a go there or do you want me to uh, I guess I could okay Okay, moving on to uh, planning board application uh, number four, uh, planning board application number 2019-04, Kansas Avenue at Kentucky Street. Uh, 
short form seeker. Uh, this is a subdivision sketch review. Request to subdivide existing 1.27 acre lot into four separate lots, creating three new lots of sizes 0.225 acres, 0.116 acres, and 0.173 acres, and retaining uh, 0.1756 acres of the original parcel. Applicants KLM Development and the plan preparer is AES Northeast. Correct. We're uh, we're hoping to subdivide off uh, the other lots. Um, it's uh, not coming up. Okay. Well, anyway, if you guys have the drawing, so uh, yes, yeah, so we're hoping to build some new homes there this summer, and uh, we think it's a good balance of the multifamily building townhouse building we've started construction on will be completing early summer and we're hoping to start construction on the homes uh, as well on the homes for lots uh, there's there'll be three additional lots right. um, one Two, three and four right yeah one I believe is already across a road so that's technically already subdivided right so, so it would be I guess for the two adjacent lots mm -hmm. to the multifamily building. When you built the multifamily structure or when you presented before this board, yeah, I think you alerted us to this potential at that time as well. Um, we, we didn't actually, hadn't made up our mind yet, so we kind of left it as kind of a blank slate. Um, so we're proposing the homes rather than more apartments. Just um, from a business standpoint, the as a business decision basically for us, the multifamily obviously costs a lot of money to build, so we're home builders. We can hopefully sell a couple houses this summer, recoup some money and I think it'd be a good balance for us and also for the neighborhood as well. Okay. Um, so we've got uh, generally four lot subdivision. Um, and this, this isn't part of any kind of greater subdivision that is jurisdictional to the health department. No, this would not be. Uh, there's no common ownership. Kyle, you don't own anything else that's connected. Uh, not, not to, to it. Slot. No. Okay. I'm not seeing that. Okay. Uh, Thank you for thinking of me, though. You're a good man. <laughs> um, as far as acreage goes, uh, we don't get to a point where ex we're exceeding one acre in disturbance, I believe, based on the fact that we're in. I mean, we're over an acre on one, on the one side, but we're underneath the acre threshold. Yeah, even lot one, the aplex is uh, three quarters of an acre. Okay. So in and this, all the other lots are, well, point two, point one, five. Point, yeah, point twos. Yeah. Okay. So, single family homes on lots two, three, and four. Yes. Correct. And then the aplex multi. On uh, lot one, okay. Yeah. yeah, we've already, we're well under construction on the eight unit building. Are you? Yeah, yeah. we got in the right. ground just in the nick of time over the fall. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we're framed That's up. Good. And uh, yeah, we're, we're working on it over there. Okay. I was going to say, this is the project I was referring to about the driveway with. Oh, we, yeah. we had seen yeah. this yeah. Right. last, so last you year. You can see it's much longer. Yep. You know, it goes past that. 20, it, down 20 what is it man yeah. 18 feet was that, that 18 property. feet is that okay but yeah. I don't think it was to my it was well, a split uh, from the corner of the building is 28.6 so yeah that looks about right mm -hmm. correct yeah um, city department comments I'm assuming that this is still preliminary so we don't have any or has it all been submitted to departments? It was sent to Joe. Um, Joe did not have any comments. Fire and police never ever comment back. Um, has it been submitted to Department of Public Works? No. 
I have met with. Uh, we haven't. We haven't seen it, but we have met with him on site. Okay. Um, I should. I should point out too what what I show on this plan. Um, I was envisioning coming up um, with a sewer main along Kentucky, terminating in the manhole near the near the uh, division line between lots three and four. But you guys, I think, worked out a pretty good solution where we would bring up a lateral uh, uh, off um, the sewer main down in Kansas. Um, bring it up along the back of the curve in Kentucky, and then um, tie lot four and lot three into that lateral, and uh, won't, won't, won't be a city main that way. It would be a, a lateral um, that the lot owners of lot three and four would be responsible for. They just have to have a shared maintenance agreement with the line. Good point. So, yeah, um, because I. I was of the impression that the water line was out by the curb, but you guys were out there and found it. The water line is closer to the uh, to the uh, the highway boundary. Uh, yeah, it runs right runs right underneath where the sidewalk used to be. Okay, so then it makes sense if we put the a sanitary lateral on the street side of the right. sidewalk. Yep. So then, Kyle, you're going to put that sidewalk in. Those will be replaced. Yeah, on both Kansas and. Uh, Correct. The limits of your infrastructure replacement and or new is uh, on just off of Kentucky, nothing on uh, Kansas then, correct? There's an existing hydrant there now, right? Right. Yeah. We, we were like all your hard work is on uh, right on Kentucky. Right. We yeah. were going to propose a sewer tap for the corner lot. Right. The sewer is on the in the street on Kansas. Right. So we were going to do the corner lot uh, on that sewer line there. Oh, well, that's. Yeah, we don't have a sewer that actually right. goes up Kentucky. Right. So if that's you take right. the one house and tie that into the sewer line okay. that's on Kansas. Okay. And then run a single service line. Right over then there. You don't have, yeah. You don't have a shared maintenance agreement and you don't. Uh, that's yeah. correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we won't need the shared maintenance right. agreement because the corner lot. Two We'll tie right into Makes the sense. sewer main on Kansas. So it's just lot okay. four will have a you know, somewhat long lateral. It'll be weird. Yeah. Typically they go across the road to tie into the line. Yeah. Because our line's on Kansas. Right. They'll actually follow the road to tie into the line on Kansas. But the base is funny when we build over there because yeah. <laughs> there's no sewer on that street. Yeah. So there's a lot of times we got to go across the street into a neighbor's yard for sewer or for water. So it's... Mm -hmm. As we've been redeveloping, we kind of have to get a little bit creative with public works yep. to service these properties. So multiple site visits. Yeah. So for the next meeting, then, since subdivision does require multiple meetings, uh, you'll be updating, or Scott, you'll be updating your plan to show these to show improvements yeah. and Absolutely. what you've agreed upon. Okay. On the service line too. Yep. I think also if you can with notes, yeah. If you can actually update your your plan along Kansas and Kentucky, I, I'm, I'm, ass, I'm assuming many of these curb cuts have been removed. These old driveways, are they all still there? They're all still there. Yeah. Mm. Are you leaving all those? No, those will be removed. But we we ran out of time last fall. Okay. Yeah, that's part of the demolition plan for the eight foot yeah, like plan review. So we just so we did down, down to the when. The ground froze, hmm. so we couldn't do any more work last fall. So, which is fine because we've been using it for an ingress and egress during construction. Mm -hmm. So it's it's actually worked out better that way. So if we can if we can update this plan mm -hmm. to match your approved Aplex plan and you know show bring it up to date, show where the new sidewalk is going to be, mm -hmm. you, and you're going to extend the sidewalk up Kentucky to match up with where it's demoed. Where it's demo, correct? Yeah, the, there is the no sidewalk right there, there now. It was removed uh, yep. a number of years ago. Yep. So we can dead end it at the property. I was going to say, I think, <clears throat> I think if you go back and look at the approvals of this subdivision before you purchased it, there were conditions on sidewalk, and I think it included sidewalk along Kentucky and Kansas. That was part of our our previous submittal for the. Original eight, eight unit lines. was replacing all those as right. well. Right, you're talking about something earlier. Though? That was trying to. Well, no, that was. Maybe you, maybe you get some help from the, the seller. That was trying. Uh, yeah, good luck. Actually, it was a condition. It was a condition of 
future development of the lots. So I believe that so it was, was on the developer. In this case, it would be Kai, it would be the developer, uh, I, not I've, the seller. And I believe it was yeah. Tom, Maggie. The, I think so. Is that where you got it from? Yeah. Yes. Maggie. Oh, yeah. All these prior. And it was Dean, Dean of the survey. Correct. Yeah. So that, that, that's. Tom. So it wasn't on Tom, it was on. It was on the subsequent the, developer. It, it, it does developer. work. Yeah. He, he made. Oh, the, that's interesting. He made the. <laughs> Pitch or the proposal that he would he, put that as a condition of his property. Any future development would require. Well, a good guy. That's, that's an interesting way to structure a deal. <laughs> hey, we should just take notes on that. Right. Sure yeah. Somebody else can do that later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, we, we, we will be post construction, obviously, if we wait till the end because driving concrete trucks over the Sidewalks are one of the last things we do before we put yeah. them on is replace the sidewalks. That way they're intact. Nobody's running over them. And they're, yeah. they're you know, not cracked and so forth. So that will be part of the plan. Okay. And I, and I, and I believe as part of that aplex, we had also addressed the whole handicap accessibility. At on, on the corner. corner yep. and all that. Yeah. Tapers. Yep. Yeah. Um, we do have to schedule a public hearing for this for next meeting. Yeah. So we'll make sure we do that uh, once the applicant, you know, I guess confirms will be on the uh, on the agenda next for the next month. I don't know any other uh, any other comments, questions from the board. If not, then I think uh, you know. We'll summarize and get you something in writing here in the next week or so. We're planning staff will and maybe see you next month. Sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So that pretty much concludes our agenda, but we did have a at least a comment from a discussion point of one member. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Wanted to bring up to the board. No oh boy. <laughs> Um, basically, my uh, my question to board members, and I look at some of these historic site reviews that we do, and a number of them are maintenance issues versus construction or renovation uh, type issues. And it seems like when you drive around the, the historic uh, districts, you look at some of these properties and wonder why aren't these people, you know, making their necessary maintenance repairs. And I think one of the obstacles is the difficulty in achieving or uh, being granted permission to to do that. I think there has to be an easier way or at least an alternative that we should look at that makes it easier for people to maintain historic sites. Um, and I think it'll make these neighborhoods better places if we're working to encourage people to make the process easier and achieving essentially the same objective to uh, to clean up their properties and you know make them safe make them more curb appealing um, so I, I think there's room in the in the maintenance side of you know this discussion that we can simplify the process and or at least it's worthy of discussion. Well, I think the code's pretty clear in terms of what standards we have to adhere to. The, um, but we also allow replacement in kind. In other words, if you're doing exactly the same thing, you're taking a window out, putting another window in, and you're going to replace it with exactly the same kind of window, even though that window's vinyl or whatever, we usually, just like on the base, just like with the, yeah. the agreement that the Army the Air Force came up with for conveyances on the base. Um, you're allowed to do replacement in kind, but if you want to change it and make it yeah. something different, at that point you've got a different standard. The other thing is, think how long this historic site 
has actually been there, mostly from generally about 76 to 82, most of the districts were created. So that anybody that buys into that neighborhood is a buyer with notice. Sure. You know, you need to do it's your not research. It's to accept the, the, the deterioration of property, though. No, it's no. It's not, not the right reason to say because it was that way when you bought it. Now no, I don't mean that. But, but, if, but they argue, that if they argue and they say, I didn't know that I had to do this and blah, blah, that's not a reason. It's not Just an like, argument. That's not an argument. What I'm saying is you look at that property on Court Street. Which one? The one that we address. The guy, the roofing guy. No, porch. it wasn't roofing. It was a porch. Okay. The, the one, the that pillar co guy. Couple columns. Oh, the okay. pillar guy was on Pike Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This was that porch but, that had a, yes. had a return in the back. Yes. Okay. And it was essentially a maintenance type issue. Yeah. That, you know, the the process in in getting permission is quite extensive and I think it was the deterrent for cleaning up the property. I, I, all I'm saying you is... You think that was the case for that? Yes. Really I, do? Yeah. I think the guy was broke. That's that's my feeling on it. No, you know, he's a... There are, are multiple... Had medical issues and had to postpone his hearings. Did you want to say that? There are multiple... He had medical issues. Had to, he had to miss several hearings. Okay. These are people that are multiple business owners right. in this community. Yeah. That are active, thriving businesses. So... All right. It's, yeah, I, I I tend to think uh, that overall, you know, adding to Rick's point, uh, these districts in themselves, in many areas, have have become lacking in maintenance. You know, there are many properties that have. Um, whether that's because. You know, people or individuals believe the process is difficult. Or that they're multifamily homes and they're just natural landlords that aren't going to take care could, of their could, stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. Could, could, could be, happens. but, I, but I, think, yeah. I think yeah, I think the, the, the question does come down to um, also we see more and more individuals who are trying to maintain their properties. I would agree. Being thrown to us after the fact because they're they're caught maintaining their properties without a building permit mm -hmm. and then get mm -hmm. pushed yep. back to us. Yeah. It, 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 you know, we're given a pretty strict standard in the, underneath this zoning ordinance. You know, mm -hmm. we're referred, referred directly to the federal standards. Yeah. Yep. Is that yes. appropriate yep. today? You know, back in 1970, 1980, you know, you had conditions that, that dictated that or, or that that was put in place is that still something that's applicable today so i think that, that that's a good question but i think it's broader than just the historic sale, right i mean it's the comprehensive plan that the city of plattsburgh is how old 23 years i agree 23 years the zoning ordinance was last revised in 2001 i think it says yeah. up front the, and I no, think I mean we've got to be. Uh, those are those are not the appropriate time horizons on which a city should be doing its planning, right? I mean, five, ten, fifteen, twenty years are revisions and appropriate time for you know and reups of those plans. And I and I believe and, and I believe that comprehensive Standard plan really sort of stemmed around. The park redevelopment and the bay. redevelopment the of the property yes. that was being received yeah. from the base, you know, back to the city that sort of brought that about. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you looked at our zoning ordinance, our zoning ordinance probably has not had a wholesale review and consideration in much longer, over a much longer period of time. It's probably been, I don't know, Rick, did you have anything there between There are you? ordinances that are still original. In the document, I was going to say in your time between eighty eight and eighty eight and two thousand one, did you see any kind of re other than the small, once again these small pieces of change? Did you ever see? It was so. But yeah. I think Kurt had mentioned, you know, we really are here to. We've been tasked to do planning, yeah. and we're dealing with fires. 
not planning, you know. And I think to, to truly um, execute our responsibility, then, it, then I think we have to look, at least part of our responsibility has to be in the planning process. And part of that is developing ordinances, not us developing the ordinance, but bringing forth, you know, a comprehensive viewpoint that, you know, justifies the change in an ordinance mm -hmm. and what the valued outcome of that needs to be. So, I mean, it's, it's late and to move this along for tonight, right? I mean, could the planning board make a resolution to that we would, I mean, I think our first step would be to just send a letter to the council, the city council, the common council, would just say, we encourage the common council to undertake a comprehensive planning process and to seek funding for that process and we have a planner on staff now, et cetera. And to, I mean, we can't undertake it on our own. I mean, it's gotta be a common council initiative. Yeah. Would we just send that letter first and signal that this needs to be done? Am I dreaming, but don't you recall Kevin Farrington telling us that the code was gonna be updated and get ready because you're going to have twice as many meetings and we're going to be working on the code. Yes, and, yes, yes we yes, had that yes. talk and, and he's gone and it's dropped and uh, sure. but we he it made it very clear to us there was going to be a whole lot yeah, of meetings. Get ready. Yes, yeah, right. It was coming up. And, but, it, and so I don't know where that went, but. I think, I think it's maybe appropriate that the, you know, we have enough different items come up monthly yeah on once again putting out fires with our putting ordinance fires. or yeah. the stuff that doesn't is difficult to interpret uh you know zones that we you know zoning areas of the city that we have questions on whether things that are you know truly yeah should be should be reviewed and try going back to the ordinance to figure it out i gotta tell you i brought my kids up on on montcalm avenue and I identified the old French quarters as being the perfect neighborhood communities. You had your churches, you had your schools, you had the little mom and pop, you know, grocery stores, places to eat, pharmacy, you know, and when you look at walkability, when you look at, you know, clean air environments, these are all factors in why we should start looking at, you know, bringing back some neighborhood and community type uh, places for our kids to grow up or grandkids in my case. You know, it's, I, I really enjoy bringing my kids up in that environment where they could walk to anything that they wanted. They didn't have to jump in the car or have us take them to, to a shopping center to get something. Valley yeah. Lucas is gone, okay? <laughs> yeah, MNC Market, uh, St. Dennis's. When you look at all of the, the IGA yeah. was on Montcalm Avenue. Yeah. The second building in on the right. You know, who would have thought? Yeah. But I think it was a neighborhood. That's where Syracuse was, too. When I grew up as a yeah. little kid, that's why you had a barber right around the block and all these little mom and pop grocery stores, movie, yeah. little movie theaters, there was everything there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. It was the same. It's not that way anymore. No. no. The west side is not that way. No. Not even close. But I yeah. do agree with Kurt that all of that has to, should really go back to a comprehensive plan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the city, an updated comprehensive plan that would lead to updated zoning. And in theory, if you think about all this money they want to spend on downtown, Right. Without a Timing updated comprehensive right. plan to Timing address what's happening now. downtown. Yes. The town just did it. Well, it's right there. Yeah. Last Come on, fellas. Smart growth. They're, they're still doing it. They're, they're, set. Set. they're still doing yeah. it. The, That's the, yeah. You were there, right? When they started. The town, the town has had an, an actually very, for our area, a very progressive schedule in their planning. Yeah. I, think the, I think they actually town. try to, the town, town. the town, oh, yeah. try to yeah. Oh, yeah. do that. The town has a long history of, uh, of planning, and the city has less. The, the, well, the same long history, the same long history, but less so. effective implementation. So, uh, with all that said, 
what does the board feel would be our, you know, what are we asking for? What would be our directive to Because if we ask recommend them to get a the grant city. to do this, it'll never happen. Recommend. Should I think they need to decide, to they need to decide to spend their own money. Okay. I mean, they, yeah. they have they a seven-year schedule in which they, they plan to update the comprehensive plan, and at some point in that schedule, I think around five years or so, they start seeking grant money for that. Um, they did get a grant for the Smart Growth Plan that they're still, that they're currently working on, that started last year. Um, but grant money is really what funds a lot of this. They do appropriate some funds toward it, but grant money comes in to play. And it is the town board that then made a comprehensive plan like committee, right? Uh, the Yes, the town board appointed a, count, uh, they appointed like a 20 member committee. It was a very large uh, committee of people. I think on average there was maybe eight people that showed up to each meeting. Yeah. Um, their most recent one was That's actually just a few weeks ago and they had a larger turnout at that one. But yes, the town council, um, town board, they did appoint a committee. It did include several planning board members. So it was not the full planning board, but it did, did include several of those members. Which um, included probably different representatives from the different uh, areas yeah, areas of the town or right. district right. voting districts. Right. I mean, the they town. have some members on that committee that are not even town residents. They have some that are business leaders in the town or other, you know, realtors, business. I think yeah. they'll be sets on it. Um, but, yeah, but they're still stakeholders. Yeah, stakeholders, yeah. definitely, of sure. course. Um, but they have various various entities. Um, there are some flat-out residents on the board as well. Um, yeah. One of the one of the things that I had mentioned to the mayor was, um, you know, we live in a community with the, the biggest asset you could ask for and having the college and a lot of classes and programs at the college that we should be inviting in rather than, you know, just tell them to stay in their little area and behave. We don't, you know, when the DRI money started, you know, when that started becoming a reality, why aren't we dealing with the hospitality people and you know, at the college, and why, why don't we bring this more students downtown in these development projects? Just like I would ask, you know, why don't we bring the students in to help with the comprehensive plan? You know who actually the last one, Dick Lamb, was the last person from Plattsburgh State to be involved um, writing the, yes. the comprehensive plan. And he kind of orchestrated that, believe it or not. Actually, you know, uh, outside of the college, you know, what do we have? We have one of the largest shoreline, freshwater shorelines mm -hmm. in the country. I mean, that should be part of a comprehensive plan, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not, yeah. not, we hear, you know, they're going to do this with the crate or they're, you know, do this with the city beach, yeah. but there's an actual, there's an actual look at this as a community. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do with that? Same thing with the, the oval. I mean, probably one of the most, another significant historical yeah. location Historic. adjacent to, the, you know, other historic areas of the community, we should have an update. I mean, if, our, if our last time we looked at that was in 2001, Look how it's changed since 2001. Yeah, Maybe we should update our plan accordingly to yeah. ensure that. Mm -hmm. Well, and remember with the actual comprehensive plan, it, it, it envisioned a lot more commercial uses right along the waterfront there. Not, you know what I mean? Like a, a bike rental places and ice cream shops mm -hmm. and gift card shops and, and, and all these other things, and that's why they're in the code as being allowed in that district. Well, if you plopped a bunch of those things down next to all those residences, there'd be a big problem. So it really, that whole section needs to be looked at because I don't think commercial uh, little mini shops and things on the waterfront is really what's happening in that area. So, uh, so I'd be willing to draft a resolution. There we go. Right, the, to bring to the next planning board meeting, and then we, you know, save ten minutes at the end, mm -hmm. read that, and then I, I'll send it out ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Right, I'll try to I'll, I'll try to get it out the next few days. We can edit it. Maybe it's not ready to be. Just be careful if you do a serial 
email communication between the members where you guys chime in, it actually does go to open meetings law. Okay. And open meetings law. It, it, it's considered okay. a quorum if you begin an email conversation. So, so with I'll give you my so secret they, email. You'll be good. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Maybe, maybe best bet we'll is, for you to is forward the draft to the planning department. Yeah. And then you can get yeah. the draft copy out to everybody. We can. I like the idea because a lot of statements just went flying around the table, yeah. especially by Rick, who should have brought beers to this part of the meeting. But that's yeah. beside the point, yeah. right? <laughs> a lot of statements were made. You stood up and you said, here's how I'm going to fix the problem. I'm going to draft something. That's good. Happy with that. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I'm loving you, buddy. There you go. My man. <laughs> We're going to talk like that, Rick. You're bringing beer next time. At least then that's enough. Stuff on paper to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And work on and then be able to vote on and pass on yeah. to the council and give them, you know, here's... Yeah, we'll work it up. I mean, I'm super rusty on the, the actual laws of New York State regarding planning commissions or planning boards, but I believe that you guys have the, the power yourselves to draft a comprehensive plan. I don't think you have to hire a third party. It's Yeah, in our spare time. Um, yeah, most people do, and that's where grant funding comes in, right. but I think you guys are within your power to do that if... The Common Council grants you that authority to do so. Oh, yeah. So starting with the resolution yeah. to them. Yeah, we'll get yeah. Andrew to help us out here too. He's sitting yeah. around, so yeah, yeah, you're in the game. Yeah. I, th I think I think ultimately <laughs> though, any future comprehensive plan is is going to require some type of consultant guidance. Oh yeah, yeah. no doubt, yeah. no you doubt. Know, that, that, yeah. So no, we're not a little hamlet. So most people, most places get the consultant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're we're going to need some support from the Common yeah, Council the time. Yeah. to assist us with that. Yeah. So, Kurt, if you can, right. since you were willing, thank you yeah. to draft something up. We'll. Uh, the last time I volunteered. We'll get. We'll consider. Yeah. Well, you, I'm just telling you, I appreciate it, buddy. There you go. Yeah. So you got That's my appreciation. For me, John. That's enough. Yeah, for me. baby. Yeah. See that? We'll get. <laughs> we'll consider that at the next meeting. You know what? What also might be a nice thing is if we had a. Uh, a draft that we agreed upon. Maybe if we can get the zoning board to also consider that. That's yeah. a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. You know, put that on their agenda to yeah. review. Yeah. And Send it to the council. Consider adopting as well. Yeah. Same. The same resolution from both that would boards be, would be mean something. Hopefully, it would. Hopefully, yeah. Well, yeah. The parking. Yes. I'm trying to be positive, yeah. lady, yeah. but you know. <laughs> Is anybody else going to go to the training? Oh, no, I'm not going. You're going. I'm not going. It won't take me long to do. I, I think you get we should gift. also. You've got the gift. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I've never seen the hospital here before. They, no. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. We invited Chris on, on a number of occasions, or Ed Leiden before. Chris. Oh, yeah, back in the day. Yeah. 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 We invited them to share their, you know, their development plans of the hospital. You know that when I started, the hospital did not have a single... Um, a single sprinkler head in the entire building. Mm -hmm. The entire hospital. When structure. was that? When was that? Oh you God, know? that was Night. with Ed back in probably starting in '89. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And then you know now today the entire mm -hmm. campus is you know, yeah. sprinkler. Yeah. Came came a long way. Every one of those outbuildings, the MLB one, two, Alice Minor. The hospital unit, the the new patient building above the cafeteria, that whole thing, and the MRI building. It was the original structure when I started, and we mm -hmm. went through comprehensive planning together. Sure. And when you know when we talked about you know coming up with zoning regulations that made it easier for the for the hospital to develop, well, it came out of these kind of discussions. So you can do that when you have communication. I think what we had discovered when we were looking at it, they never actually got a special use permit ever to yeah. be a hospital. And it's like, well, we should take care of this. Yes. And that's how they came in front of us and we, we gave them the permit and at the same time, I think, or maybe we gave them the permit and then I think they came up with us for something else and it was like, well, why are, you, why are you here again? Why are we, we don't doing need this you again. Yeah. yeah. You're a hospital. We yeah. know that. Yeah. So I okay. have a question for the board while you're all here. Sorry. Oh. I, I can tell you guys want to get. So we've had a few occasions recently where applicants are asking almost more to meet with you guys just for a general idea of, I guess, to run their ideas by you rather than submit a full plan to you. They're looking for comment, pre-comment, if that makes sense. Um, I'm so not isn't sure. our time precious, don't we? Don't we? <laughs> I'm sorry. And we can't just individually meet with them, really, and give them. They want to meet right. with us as a board. I think. Right. I th so I think that what they're looking for is kind of like a pre a pre, -pre, -meeting. pre meeting. Like a, is there an open? Why can they bring open forums? I think if they're session within our meeting every time. No, I think if they're looking for board comment. Then they submit a sketch, no different than what you know three of the applicants submitted today. Yeah. They all yeah. were what's, what's it cost them to submit that sketch? Right now, yeah. I mean, uh, our were, subdivision is uh, twenty-five dollars. Yeah. They were all at different. A bargain. They were all at different levels of completeness. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's well, craziness. What you do. Yeah. You know what I mean, if they want to submit a sketch, I, I, I know we I have at least one that wants to. He's been doing this for so long. Get he knows from the board better. without even submitting a sketch. No, I don't. Yeah, no, he's no. worse than Aaron today. He's yeah. worse than Aaron. So yeah. any, anyway, <laughs> Shalise is, is indicating that she has one applicant, or yeah. proposed applicant, yes. that wants to submit nothing but wants to present a summary of a project for our comments. My initial opinion is if you want to come in front of the board, you paper. need to submit something. On paper. Yes. Yes. In yes. Writing. What is the project, yes. if I may ask? What? May I not answer that? Oh, okay. Jesus Christ. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. To the, the what? what? Related to the DRI. I, I think. To the oh, what? Oh, the DRI. DRI, the big project downtown. I think, I think it's this Downtown area. Redevelopment Initiative. Initiative. Yeah, that's what I yeah. thought. Okay, I, I, was I, close. I think it's appropriate. Yeah. I personally, <laughs> and the rest of the board can put their input but I think put it it's, appro I think it's appropriate. I think it's appropriate. I've had other applicants asking the same thing. McDonald's was looking to come back this month without actually submitting further detail. They just kind of wanted to get more comment from you. And really? As you guys are, are aware, you've already seen McDonald's several times now without a final Yeah, submission. do what we yeah. ask you nicely to do. Yeah. I, th I, th I believe it's appropriate to have some level of written submission. Yes, to I come agree. Yeah, so we so the health department say the same know thing. You know that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They can't and, just, and, and you don't want them coming back later and saying, well, you approved this at this meeting. Truthfully, beyond, beyond that, if they want to meet with planning staff 
if they want to truthfully the the, the chairs of the zoning and planning we've we've sat down sort of pre-meeting yeah, you know, we can do that. That. I want to commit you time that. to more of that but once again that that is available to them but yeah. if it's going to be a whole board official yeah you know member meeting with yeah. official comments then it should be something official submitted yeah and that's, yeah. that's a good idea other towns and municipalities is either they have a planning department that you meet with prior to submitting your sketch plan you yeah code enforcement officer that you right. meet with basically right. these are the zoning ordinances this is what you're going to yeah. be looking at as far as yeah. you know your parking and everything yeah. so basically these are the laws that you have to adhere by put this down on paper and then submit for schedule right that, that's typically what's done with yeah that. the only thing i could could offer is that in our comprehensive planning perhaps in our zoning we create more opportunity for you know the town the yeah. town has a sketch plan review that leads you to their final, final review. review you know what i mean yeah. where we yeah. actually but it's it's essentially the same as we have now, though. It's those sequence of meetings. You I, know? I don't think in our ordinance, though, we technically give a sequence. Like, you have to get right. sketched first, right. and then yeah. you go to the next meeting. Like, you yeah. you could just go to, if, if they wanted that called final, they could just say. They could, yeah. And you could say, no, it's not approved. You, you right. could. But, right. but once yeah. again, there isn't yeah. that in between. It's yeah. just a submission. Mm hmm right now as an alternate member i'm exercising my right to get out of here before they <laughs> <laughs> yeah before uh, rick says anything there you go yeah, yeah. but we're a voluntary a volunteer board very good word right we're not going to entertain joe blow half-baked ideas for more yeah. work right with our time that are taking time from other people that are bringing applications that are ready I'm to be I'm reviewed I'm and go through a process and if we have that time, we should use it to do planning, yeah. <laughs> not to do impromptu cycling or anything. Which Agreed. may or may not include somebody venting. Yes. <laughs> yes. How was that? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean. Is that, so is that is that clear enough for you? Yes. Okay. okay. Can, can I make I mean, that? I to, 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 to dedicate. Um, a certain amount of time every meeting to openly discuss planning ideas so so if you can add well if you can add to the end of each planning agenda you know other business at the end so and like then that open public comment no, no other business for the board to review and discuss yeah. i mean we don't even have that at the end of our agenda, but we should yeah, have that. I would actually yeah. specifically not, like public can attend, but not for public we, comment. Correct, it's still an open meeting. Right. Anybody can attend, but it's, not a, it's not a public out. hearing. It's yeah. not a time for public comment. It's time for the board yeah. just to review. Yeah. That's typical of most meetings. Other meetings yeah. at the end. Open at the items end, for the, the board. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 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 Is that you, buddy? We need your motion. Do you have a motion to adjourn? I'll make it. Yeah. Wait, who first? She made the motion. I second. Thank you. Okay. Do your roll call. Maybe I cut her out. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So if we are going to do roll call, are you going to be switching it up so it starts on a different person every single time? Is that good? Yes. Okay. Otherwise, it always goes across the table like this and lands on the final person to make a decision. Well, that's, yeah, that's so, probably not a good thing. So, so should, it's wise. You are wise. Yes, that's why I like paper. Let's be able to tax preparation. So you know? Shalise is going right. to yell at her. But, but don't we just have the integrity to vote how we would vote anyway? Like. And I don't think uh, yeah. any of us are voting no, on any hot bed items. Frequently, there can be. Yeah. It was worse with the zoning board because there's often a little more mistakes where you've got something that's two to three or one to four yeah, or whatever, it and it falls on yeah. that last person yeah. who might make a majority and who might not. I will. Have several well, okay. I will yeah. randomize. So. The <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know how this package should be put together, yeah. 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 Ye